we're going to now look at the next uh, circuit, a very similar one, but this time we're going to add in R3 in the middle. Instead of having a wire, we'll put a resistor. Um, again, we're going to set up our currents, I1 going to the right, I2 going to the left this time, and I3 going down through R3. From the first, uh, Kirchhoff's first law, the junction rule, um, we're going to see that I1 is equal to I2 plus I3. This is says that the current coming in to this little node here, all the electrons that come into there have to come out. So it's just conservation of charge. Now we're going to go clockwise around the loops again and see what, our, uh, what happens for each of the loops. Again, using Kirchhoff's second law, that the uh, voltage drop around the loop, or the voltage, um, has to add to zero around the uh, loop. So if we look at the first one, the first loop, we get V naught plus or minus the, uh, the loss from I traveling through R1 minus the loss of I traveling through R3. And those form a full loop, so they have to add up to zero. Similar, the other one, the other side of the loop, or the other loop, we're going to go, we're going to see that we get the opposite direction of what we call I2. So we get the voltage drop across here, we gain a minus sign, so that's a plus I3, R3, so from this guy actually. I2 follows in that direction, R2, so again we get a voltage drop across that, but we're going in the opposite direction of the way we set our current, so we get a plus sign. And we're going opposite of our way through the voltage, so we see that our V naught is flowing, or we have a potential in that direction. And all three of those, again, add to zero. So we have three equations and three unknowns, so we're all set. So let's start uh, working things out. Using the junction, or the junction rule, or the node equation here, we're going to substitute it into these two equations. So V naught is equal to I1 R1 plus the sum I1 R I2 times R3. This is the current over there times R3. And V naught is equal to I2 R2 times again I3 times R3. Uh, subtract these two equations to see if we can reduce this down even a little bit further. And we can see that I2 is equal to I1 times R1 divided by R2. And substituting this for I2, we can get I1 out. I1, so if we look at these, this equation up here and this one down here, we can combine stuff together and see that I1 is equal to V0 times R2 divided by the product R1, R3 plus R2 times the sum of R1 plus R3. A little bit of a complicated equation, but it's just simple math to get there. Simple multiple equations uh, solving for multiple variables. Uh, from here, we can substitute back in. So we can take this guy and substitute back in for one of for I two. Get I two has a very similar looking relationship, which is not surprising because the uh, the two res uh, parts of the circuit look very similar. And finally, I three can be solved in the same way. And if we try plugging in R3 equals 0, that was the case we previously solved, we can see that R3 would cancel here, this term would go away, and we're left with um, uh, these terms end up uh, matching the previous ones that we have. So it is consistent, and it's a good check that we can do.